As sisters, it's it's Tosh and Sash. I really like that. Thank you. You That's, need to get on one of her singles. You know what I'm saying? Do a feature. She's in my videos. Oh, okay. They're even better. Yeah. You're even in the videos? Better. Yeah. I'm in one of them, yeah. Oh, that's the song. Two of them. Two of them, yeah. So you're like a video girl. I should have added <laughs> that to your... <laughs> She's <laughs> the original video you girl. Were the, you were like in a bunch of videos. Like, when it's, you know, back in the day. Back you know, when it counted, to be honest. Back when it counted. Back when they actually paid for real. <laughs> and it was agencies. like booking a, a feature. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. you had a music video, it was like being in a feature film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like exclusive, you know? And you, now it's like you're just hanging out with that. the homies in the iPhone. <laughs> right. No, but that's real. Like yeah. back back then, I feel like the the girls who were in the videos, there was a whole level of respect to it. It was like to the game. You guys were hosting. You guys were the original stars of now we would think of Instagram. Tit drill. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. before. Yeah, I remember I had these young little girls asking me, how can I be in a music video? Like it was really hard to get in. It, know, was, it was really it, But exclusive. it was. It was a thing. That was a thing. And you never wanted to be in... Tosh, you didn't want to be all up in the music video. I never really wanted to be. To be honest, I've been offered a few times. I've done one or two, but I was dating a rapper at the time. We've he done was one like, together. oh, hell no. Yeah, he was like, hell no. You know what? I couldn't even. You, so you date rappers. So now no, we, no, I dated no. one. But that's all it takes. That once you it. cross over the line of dating one, you know what I'm saying? Once you cross. It's once, like once you, you go, go black, rap, no, once you go, you rap. go rap, like <laughs> I go back. Because <laughs> if I'm a doctor and I'm like, oh, and you're like, oh yeah, you know, used to date Fifty Cent, and I'm like, oh, like my whole, oh, he definitely we wasn't Fifty Cent. Oh, uh-uh, okay, Mm-mm. okay. So, but we're not dropping. We wasn't names on that level. Who the rapper was? No, we're not dropping. We're not that. just gonna drop you- the. Okay, well, but if it was like a, if it was a J. Nelly, Cole, then the doctor wouldn't mind so much. You, I feel like you're. If a it Nelly. was like a Waka Flock of Flame, then maybe the doctor would mind. That's it a conversation. It depends. No, I mean, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to. Okay, because you look like a band aid under the eye. No. Okay. No. Gonna, no. No you, way. Okay, so if you had a guest no. rapper that soul, talks, I'm, there's there's soul in your energy. They're soul. I think it's a soulful rapper. Nah, because I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, she said, no. Nah. The best. <laughs> look, girls always want to be like, oh, you know when the guy they're married to is like, oh, who are, are, am I the best you've ever had? It's like, no. No, you're not. The best was the guy without a job who was dropping his mixtape in 20 years. <laughs> like, the guy who didn't have a car, that's the guy who's the best. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's who you dated. Yeah, pretty so, much. Yeah. <laughs> that's no. how it See, it. Tarot, what? You. George is zero. That's how it works. And then, <laughs> and then Sasha's, you know, you, you've been around the industry a lot. Yeah, I've been, I've been around it for a long time. And what yeah. is your overall perception of the industry, especially when it yeah. comes to relationships? And when it comes to relationships, okay. Well, let's talk. Let's talk about the industry. Hollywood is very shady. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very thirsty. Mm-hmm. Um, people will kill each other just for fame. It's I crazy, and I've been that. around that for a long time. That's like the Selena thing. But yeah, the but manager. the way you said I haven't seen that, it sounded like you killed someone. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, you like, mm-hmm, I, mean, I am mm-hmm. not obliged <laughs> to answer your question. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's the re- what's the shadiest part of the industry that you've seen? A pattern that keeps happening. I feel like women would do whatever it takes just to be on top, to be seen. You know, they sometimes they act very desperate. Um, they're in competition with each other. You know, they want they want the spotlight, and so I've witnessed a lot of that, and it's like it's pretty crazy. Is that is that your experience? Not exactly. I mean, I've, I have done a lot of in front of the camera work, like acting, not so much video work, but a lot of what I do is behind the scenes. And honestly, I've met some really good people in Hollywood. Uh, there's definitely that element. Sure. There's no doubt about it. But uh, I've met some people that I genuinely consider friends. And surprisingly, because when I first came to L.A., my whole perception was everyone's shady. Everyone is frivolous. Everyone got their nose done. And you know what I mean? Like you have well, that's that true. perception. Not everyone, but, <laughs> but why? The, why but why, why this, such a big dichotomy in your experiences? You were saying it is shady and you're like, oh, some of my best friends are industry. Have you worked in different branches of the industry? Is it because you're in front of the camera more? And then Well, I've been out here a lot. Well, I've been in California for 18 years. We're originally from Toronto. Our parents are Trinidadian, but we were right, born and raised in Toronto. Been here for 18 years and Natasha's been here for about... Four or five? Four or five years. So you're still so. not jaded. Is that what you're no, trying to say? No, it only takes, it takes three, three, it takes there's three there's years. There's a lot of good people in Hollywood. There is, but... It's just, you know, I think she deals more with talent and I deal more with like people behind the scenes. 
and people behind the scenes can be shady too but uh, we have different personalities too i'm a very no nonsense type of person and it comes across like right away like people can read that about me so it's like in the caribbean there's a saying don't be no who for frighten people mm-hmm. which means ghosts know who to scare they just wow. know don't fuck with me yeah, can you say that phrase one more time <laughs> don't be no who for frighten i love the way she says it and you I'm know what duppy is right duppy no like, it's like a ghost like, like ghost like, like spirit yeah. they know who to scare who to frighten right so I'm not saying that she, we just have different energy. She's more well. She's much more welcoming than I am. She's more open. Uh-huh. Whereas I'm like I have a really because your energies are just she, so positive. Both she's like them. she's oh, her positive. personality is more like I don't like you until you give me a reason to like you. <laughs> I'm more like everybody welcome <laughs> yeah. until you give me a reason to to not like you. You know right. that's more, more my personality. I'm more open. There's certain people I feel a vibe with immediately, and I trust my instincts. But if Anything feels off, I don't give a fuck. The slightest like, thing. I don't it doesn't matter. I'm Are you, about that. I'm yeah. about that. So Enjoy. We were okay, talking so about this. We were exact talking same about thing this. As you two. Uh huh. As you two. Yeah. So George thinks I'm a dick because if I, any little thing I don't feel about someone, yeah. I don't care. I don't need a reason. Right. My instinct is my reason. That's how yeah. I feel. He and, has a and social I'd be wrong shield. With my instinct then. Mm-hmm. Write and find out. Yeah. I and feel like we bounce each other out, Me too. Because, like, now that I'm, now that. That we're getting older, like I feel like I've learned from being burnt and being around all the crazies. Uh-huh. I've learned to be a little bit more guarded, and so I don't really bring too many people too close to me like I used to. You're and welcome, I feel like George. Tasha plays a big You're part in that. You're preaching. Oh yeah, and <laughs> I'm I, always like I'm like Wonder wow. Woman with the bullets. You know that she was. She, no, she, no. The the bra- you have the braces on right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Our, people come around. I'm wow. like, oh, oh. are some opportunities worth missing out on because you sense a bad vibe? Will, will you it's turn down vibes. an opportunity? It's all about vibes. So, For me, it's mm-hmm. about vibes. If, I, if something doesn't feel right, it doesn't even matter to me because I'm not, I'm not in a situation where I need to do something. You know what I mean? So, and we're from the East Coast and being Caribbean, like we, it's a different kind of people than in California. I feel like in L.A., People are a little bit, they smile in your face, but they won't tell you how you feel. Mm-hmm. Where on the East Coast, you kind of, what you see is what you get. Yeah, you know, we're so, from DC. Yeah. So. Right. Oh, okay. I so mean, you know I, I walk slow in New York. They push me off the sidewalk. Oh, yeah. I love, I love that, that about New York. Yeah, yeah and but I like that. Answer, to I don't. Your question, I don't like being pushed. In my philosophy, <laughs> heck yeah, I rather miss out on an opportunity. A hundred percent. Yeah, and honestly, I always joke around. I'm like, yo, if I was a different kind of person, I'd be living on top of the hill right now. Like, wow. <laughs> but that's real. But and, and we had a conversation. What's the difference between being kind and nice because they're not the same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And being and George is like, well, you're not nice. And I'm like, but I'm kind. Right. I'm just not nice. Nice is Can you explain this difference one more time? I, get what I, can get get nice I think that's why me and you kind of connected wow, right we can, away. Exactly. Because we're we, we, like real recognize really. Real, real yeah. recognize. Yeah. Real. <laughs> so I'm not real. I'm a duppy. <laughs> 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 blah, 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 so, <laughs> <laughs> so we play this game either or just to get to know each okay. one of you a little better. Uh-huh. So you have a choice. It's either or. You cannot pick mm-hmm. the gray area. Oh, good Lord. Oh, Lord. I'm okay? all about gray areas. Either or. Life is a gray area. Oh, <laughs> Let's start. Gosh. All right. Women friends or male friends? Male friends. Women friends. Okay. Take the photo or be in the photo? Be in the photo. Take the photo. Strong. Oh, <laughs> strong. strong. <laughs> Prestige or popularity? Prestige. Prestige. With that being said, date a guy who has a million followers or date a guy who has like four followers and two of them are his parents? Just date a good person, a good man. But you have to pick between uh-huh. the two. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. We don't make it easy. I know my answer, but I'm, I'm letting her go first. I mean, I, oh, can you repeat the question, please? Like a guy <laughs> who's very popular it. or a guy who's unknown? A guy who's very popular. Final um, answer? <laughs> we'll lock that in. A guy who's unknown for me. Sheesh. Mysterious. Why? Why do you guys feel that difference? I think... You, you go first, Sash. Honestly, I don't even like guys that are on social media most of the time. I feel like for a man, if you're on social media, it should be for a reason. If you're just on there taking selfies, just like, hey, look at me, it, it's a turn off to me. So... That's why I would say that to me. I like guys that are a little kind of bossy. You guys, you guys made me choose. So I picked the, the, the man that's more popular because I feel like if you're popular, you get more perks. If you get more perks, you, you, there's more power in it. You have more opportunity. And I'm about making money. So if you have opportunity to make money, let's make the money. She's right. Sometimes I meet people so. and, and want to do business with them. The first thing they ask, how many followers do you have? 
Mm-hmm. But it's not it's a deal breaker for me. Mm-hmm. I wish it could be a gray area. I wish I can answer this question in a gray area, but you guys had to. You guys made me choose. Yeah, with the more popular. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dinner date or movie date? Dinner date. Dinner date. A man with braids or a man with fade. So we're just discuss- we're just you forgot not- the we're locks part. White guys, white guys, no white guys. <laughs> white guys got some fades. fades. I mean, yeah. they got some fades. And they got braids <laughs> too. Fades. And dreadlocks. Hmm. Oh, I like you, hair. She likes the hair, and I and I like no hair. I just like a good shape head, you know. But, but which one would you pick? The good shape head with the braids, or the good shape head with the fade? Mm, I'll do the fade because their hair doesn't smell. You know, like we have hair, you sweat. I feel like men are more sweaty than girls. They probably get smelly in the hair. So I would say fade. Fade. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Maxwell or D'Angelo? Ooh. That's a That's a good one. one. Well, and there's a lot of people out there that are going to have to look this up. But wow. Who's taller? Who's taller? I know the answer, but I, I just, have to I think to I know go. who's taller. I got to go with Pause. Maxwell on this one. Maxwell. I would go with Maxwell. Oh, wait, I'm not. <laughs> um, all right. You know, and, and I'll tell you why we all want to go with Maxwell. Because that song on Love and Basketball came what? out, and, and oh all of gosh. us lost our virginity to that song. I don't what? care if you had, had sex or not. Have when you, that, you had to redo it. Have you seen him perform it live, though? Of course. It's oh amazing. My, and his Woman's voice is so is high and beautiful, but he's still so masculine doing it. Oh, my God. But wasn't Kevin? D'Angelo the first shirtless music yeah. video? But I'll tell you why, D'Angelo. That was a little too much. It was, a it, was sec- it was sexy, but I wasn't like no. I mean, Maxwell we has vibe. something special. The Maxwell, yeah. that song is just, because look, name three other Maxwell songs. You're gonna be struck. You're gonna be like, uh, 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 <laughs> even Maxwell might not be able to name three other songs. The pretty yeah, wings. That song is iconic. Pretty wings. Oh, that is a good song that too. Song I goes. love that song. Okay, that's how he won me over. Okay, that's I'm okay. done with George. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I can't be friends with him. George really likes Maxwell. I, I, I'm a huge Maxwell <laughs> fan. Listen, don't George. George just got Here out we of a go. relationship. Here we go. With a, uh, with a singer, so oh. very into music. His, oh. his name. Wings. His name. <laughs> he was on American Idol. George didn't know he was in a relationship. I had to explain it to him. I had, I had expressed to him that he was in a relationship. Look, I didn't know. I thought it was just guy time. He was leaving my apartment. He was, like was coming over. Dinner. He was picking them up. He was like, what time should I come pick you up? It was he solid was like, male right? bonding, <laughs> brotherhood. And I didn't realize something was off till he was leaving my place. We just mm-hmm. He just made dinner for me. And then Tehran was coming over, and he looked Tehran up and down like he was a like duppy. he wanted to fight me, and I was like, <laughs> "No, you know your boyfriend doesn't <laughs> like me, right?" Okay, so wait, I clarity here. So you're straight, yeah, and you didn't know. <laughs> but I had no, no, a boyfriend. No, no, no. <laughs> but you had fluid. a boyfriend. No, Listen, no, don't he's call fluid. me fluid. He's fluid. I'm not fluid. I'm a straight you man. You know what? You say that. <laughs> But your boyfriend disagreed. <laughs> your boyfriend was heavily upset about it. Listen, I wasn't was aware. Man, he was. George was was just. He was like, "Oh, he wrote me this note and left it on my window." George was curious. Isn't that so nice? Isn't that I thought, nice? I thought and I was we like, were George. You're best dating. Buds. You're dating this dude, bro. You What's guys, wrong with your brotherhood? Your relationship reminded me of us a little bit. No, it's yeah. so real. Yeah, yeah. That's so real. <laughs> Final question, George. The final question is we're going to switch subjects right now. Final All right. Question. Okay, I wanted to know final glasses question. or contacts. Glasses. Glasses. You I have love glasses. glasses. Yeah, I, you I, mean I, on a man or on myself? We just throw it out there. It's your interpretation is what gives us the psychological I like glasses. analysis we need. Glasses. You can excuse see someone's personality. Oh, George, <laughs> just, oh, excuse me, y'all. Okay. <laughs> I'm popping again. All right. All right. So here's Very the nice. thing. Nice. We also want to know the we we pick a crush, right? Every week we switch it up. This week is TV dads. TV dads. We all grew up to that one mm. sitcom where there was a dad, or maybe you're watching it now, and there's that guy who's a dad figure who you have a crush on. Who is it and why? What's that show 101? I don't watch much TV, but there's oh, a show. Oh, I know what you're about. talking about. He was hot. You're talking about Flex Alexander. Flex. Okay, Ooh. yeah. Flex I don't know his name. Flex. Okay, Flex. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He was a good dad. Yeah, he's a yeah. comedian. He's, he's a cutie. Fine. Yeah. Was it more so his looks or his connection Remember to his the, kids? Remember, he had the girl, and then she came to live with Both. him, and he played ba- she played basketball. And the I know, but I want her opinion on guys, yeah. since you said mine is like so overbearing. <laughs> I want to hear the female opinion you on guys. Wrong. You pick wrong guys. <laughs> you pick the wrong men in your life. So which guys would you pick, Tarot? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so, so was it more so his look or his bond with his kids? I think kids? he was attractive, and I think he's a great actor in his bond with the kids. Like, his, his character is pretty cool. And it's only dad I can think of. I don't really watch much TV. There you go. Well, he stood out for a reason. That's good. There you go. All TV right. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. Knows, the worst part is none of us can say Huxable anymore. None of us can be like I, Heathcliff That Huxable. was the first thing I wanted to say. to say. That but it wasn't, a sexual, it wasn't like I had a crush on him. I just loved him. I loved Bill Cosby. <laughs> But, ooh, Bill. you know who could get it? Oh. Bill? The, the dad from Good Times. Now, that's my kind of man. Boom. Yo, yeah, listen, he had Good Times is my swag. Yes. sitcom ever. That's and, my and type of dude. They killed him. Yes. You know? They yeah, killed yeah. Him. Well, why can't I remember his oh, name? He's like on. a classic we'll actor. What's his name? That's crazy. I mean, I don't even remember his real name, but his dad name, how can I not remember yeah, his dad? Right? His, and he I was in Roots. He's been in a lot of... Yeah. He was the guy it, in... Um, John Stamos or something like... No. Amos. Amos. It is. is. It? John Amos. We're looking John it up. John Stamos is... No, John oh Amos. Okay, okay. It's his real name. But what's his dad when he... What's John he, Amos is the actor. He was even a actor. good dad in Coming to America. Yeah. Remember? James yeah. Evans. He stood up for his girl. James, James, James Evans. Evans. There we go. James Florida. That's my kind of man. JJ. It's a good dad. Lona. Mm-hmm. And, and he was Beard Gang before Beard Gang was a thing. You yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. just had no, the swag. No, he didn't. He had a clean. He was clean shaven on the shows. On yeah, the shows. But, but before like every, the hipster thing came out, he started rocking the full beard. Because he's, yeah. he's James Evans. He, yeah, I mean, just, I just love. That's my favorite TV show of all time. Yeah. And anyone who says otherwise is wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So dad crushes are cute. We're going to do our popping and stopping. It's a trend that men's do that we mm. want to know if you guys think it should continue. Okay. Yeah, so we want to know if it's popping, which means it's good. We should continue or stopping, cut it out right away. And our popping or stopping this week is fanny packs. Fanny packs? On men. On men. Because we think it's cute on women. Like, right. I've seen these Gucci fanny packs. Even the packs shoulder ones are cool and I mean, stuff. I've seen them on women, and I think that, they're... That's tough, because if you got swag and you know how to rock something, it just works. It just it just depends on the person and how it looks on them. I know that I know that's a great a great way Listen, to answer it. I, I wear a bathrobe. Yeah. I'm not judging people. <laughs> right? I understand. Yeah, and I wear glasses, because clearly I have great swag. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaning towards stop it. Or stop, stop in. in. Stop it. Stop it. I'm leaning towards, but I do agree with her that there's sometimes that somebody can rock something that you would be like, it works. Yeah, and you'll be like, who's oh, the guy they that can rock it. anything and you're like, it works? Like, who's the person? I know who. Who? Pharrell. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good Pharrell, call. That's Pharrell a really, really good one. can do yeah. like so much. Yeah. Because when he wore the Smokey the Bear hat, everybody was wearing that hat. I agree. I agree, but I'm not attracted to Pharrell. So there's like, there's guys that can be like, oh, yeah, I like his style. But that doesn't. It, it's not. Mm-hmm. Do you have to be attracted to them to see if they're like if, if it No, works I'm just saying. Oh, I'm not. Yeah. A, I'm, I'm not attracted saying, to him. I was just. Uh, you're right. I'm <laughs> saying there's certain people you admire for style, and then there's other people that dress and the way they carry themselves is more attractive. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a difference between attractive and attraction. Attracting. Right. Yeah. Always to understand that. So Explain the difference, Tehran. It's simply just a logical, <laughs> visible uh, attraction. Right. It's, right. Is when you're. It's a logical, visible reaction to. Basically, symmetry in all cases. Right. This person is a good-looking person, but just because someone's good-looking doesn't mean you're specifically attracted to them because that's an illogical response. Right. And it's it's based on things that are hormonal and and pheromones and emotions and things that are always illogical when you think about it. Mm-hmm. And you can be attracted to someone that's not attractive at all, and you can be not attracted whatsoever to someone who's extremely attractive. Exactly. Who po- possibly causes strife in your life because your partner's like, oh, why do you hang out with so-and-so? And you're like, they're like my brother. And what I want to know... Even if they're really good looking. Yeah. What I yeah, want to know from... It doesn't mean anything these days. It really doesn't. Yeah. I feel like there's a shortage, shortage, shortage of men out there. So women shouldn't be so choosy on appearance. It's about the actual men, if they're a good mm-hmm. men, and blah, blah, blah. Why do you stuff. feel like there's a shortage of men, though? Cause uh, you know my because LA, cause there it's, is, it's LA. And I, well, I, really, I've talked men. to enough black women black to men. know that a lot of women struggle she, with finding a good man. Black men. True. Yeah, that's what she's saying. It's interesting because girls always be like, "There's a shortage of men," and I'll be like, "Really? Just turn around, Lisa. Like, <laughs> they're all like wolves waiting to <laughs> pick you up right at the bar. Hey, what's your name? Like they're waiting. I just feel like people today <laughs> look at other people like they're just not good enough. They don't know how to just settle. Um, some people don't want to settle. So there's men everywhere. It's just a matter if you want to deal with that person or not. Yeah. So, yeah, so sisters, sisters, have either of you ever dated a man 
who most people would consider unattractive, but you were still attracted to him? I dated someone who most, okay, I had some friends who thought he was ugly as sin. And then I had other friends who were like, no, no, no. He's, I mean, he's not great looking, but he's very sexy. Yeah, but still, he never got like an eight from any of your friends. Some of them. <laughs> okay. But the majority were the like, majority were seriously? Saying no. Biggie? I, like, I, understand. <laughs> I mean, I thought he was gorgeous, but hey. I, I know was, some people. There was definitely. She likes feeling. ugly looking, attractive men. Does that make any sense? <laughs> that makes sense. A, they look powerful, like Jay Z, big. That's yeah, a yeah. That's like a real you, thing. yeah, like yeah. I like men. In fact, when you guys were gonna ask me what type of rapper, I was like, Jay Z is the only rapper I could think Jay-Z. of that I would like. Oh. See, we always See, I like men like, like that too. Beyonce, mm. and now we know. Oh my God, Jay Z's yeah. got some. He's not good looking. I agree with that. Sure. I once had a public relationship with a lady, and people would ask me. <laughs> Uh, you know, are you really with her? Uh-huh. I can't believe this is a joke, this right? This is for TV. They thought it was just for TV. And really? It made me and feel. And it was, but. <laughs> <laughs> no. But the concept was he. George is an equal dating opportunist. Right. He will date a I variety date souls. of people. I date souls. Right. No, I don't date people. I, I date that. souls. If you don't have a soul. Strangely enough, all my male friends thought my man was super ugly. They were like, what are you doing with him? Like, you're a good looking girl. But a lot of my female friends were like, nah, I get it. So they get it. Did yeah. he have good hygiene? And you know what? That's all you yes. need. Like, he had good for hygiene. The most, for the most part. That's better than most men. Like, yeah, on. for the most part, he did. For the most part? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there were days. Yeah, booty hands? I need to understand why he's like, hey. No, but you know when you get comfortable with somebody? I, I, I distinctly remember him being, because he was a rapper, he'd be in the studio for like three days. He'd be like, babe, my pit smell? And I'd be like, hell yeah, they smell. That's you the do. artist in him. But, Gucci man? The artist here's man? The, I need no. to understand. Here's the clincher, though. Yes. Even. No. That's not me. Oh, okay. Here's the clincher. Is that even though he would smell, I still like the way he smelled. And then I've dated other guys that will come fresh out the sm- shower and I don't like the way they smell. Because like, you love him. Ugh, exactly. It's like, it's a mental thing. Well, actually, you know, it's interesting because we cover up our smells with all these perfumes and colognes and lotions and soaps. But the truth is you're, you are on a subconscious level attracted to people's scents. Mm-hmm. And so the more we cover it up, the more we lose a form of sexuality exactly Mm -hmm. which is why sometimes your man will come home sweaty after playing basketball or something and you'll be just very attracted to them it's a very primal attraction that's never happened for me I like beautiful that's because you smell so Middle Eastern when you come home bro (laughs) what does that smell like what does that mean you know what it means listen (laughs) what does that mean what does that mean bro listen listen. George will come home George will come home we were playing basketball one time and George I he got in the car, uh-huh. and I'm like, bro, <laughs> you smell. Wasn't that you in your bathroom, nah, bro? bro. <laughs> nah, stop being a. I'm pretty right sure. Now. I'm like a thousand percent hygienic. Like I'm OCD yeah, with hygiene, he's, and he's extra about it, so he couldn't yeah. wait till he got home. I, I got like the anti. I don't just wear deodorant, antiperspirant. Mm-hmm. I shower twice a day. You know, I spray rose water in a mist fashion <laughs> yeah. on my face, and I but walk into it. But that's the Middle Eastern it. smell. Is like do. musty rose water. It's crazy. What are you, You're throwing shade on my are roses. Are you overcompensating for something? Just no, I just enjoy. I'm very sensitive. That's hilarious. I'm very sensitive to smell, uh-huh. personally, and I really just have a knack for good fragrances. At one point, he threw I, up on a girl one. I okay, he's just making up stuff. I had a cologne, a cologne collection. A cologne uh-huh. collection. I had a hundred bottles in my cologne collection. I spent all my savings on it, so I just really get stimulated by. Nice sense. That sounds like uh, someone I know. See, yeah, yeah that's why. It's not so her, but oh, oh, and, my brother-in-law. He, he, he oh, lo- yeah, he my loves. husband. Oh, but yeah, he always husband. smells good. And if you get like a handcrafted lavender citrus candle, oh my gosh, it's to die for. <laughs> handcrafted lavender citrus. Yeah, yeah. It has to be handcrafted. That that's why it was so funny when he was smelling because he always goes out of his way. Uh huh. To be the fragrant. <laughs> I don't know clean, what he's talking about, but yeah. Super clean one, always You're like about that. Walking potpourri. Yeah, so, exactly. Something like that. Always. And so the one time it was just hilarious. Smell me. <laughs> okay, you smell amazing, bro. You smell <laughs> Thank amazing. you. I just want to prove to the listeners. You know so what I'm saying? We have we do li- get questions from our listeners and oh, we this, want this one. They is. want our advice. I don't know if we're good for advice. Are these live questions that these, just came through? No, these oh. are questions people have emailed in, okay. and we select one. 
Basically, whoever emails last is the one. <laughs> no, we have a no, process. Whoever email, no, the process is literally whoever emails, it's not even last, it's whoever emails when we're about to check the email, whoever that email <laughs> is, that is the email. I like so, that. So you have to continuously keep emailing us so we can answer your questions. Our email, email us at? Imperfectgshow at gmail.com. Perfect. Okay, mm. so our question this week is? Anonymous14 writes... My boyfriend and I decided to have an honest conversation about our past sex partners. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me the truth about his partners, which he had previously lied about. So I felt comfortable and obligated to tell him about mine. He exploded and we got into a big fight. He hasn't really talked to me since and we haven't been the same. I don't understand what the problem is. Well, sisters, can you tell your them Men what can the problem? give it, but they can't take it. Wait a minute. This girl's 14? No, 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 no. Her name oh, okay. is 14. She, 14. She didn't so, yeah, feel comfortable like, sharing her name. <laughs> she didn't 14. want her email written, so she's the 14th anonymous email that we've had this week. Okay, email. okay. Got you. So she wants to know uh, what the problem is. So she shared back her past experiences that she hadn't disclosed before because her boyfriend shared his. Right. Like men just so can't he it. had an issue with it. So what You're is the problem? Right. So, so repeat that and tell us answer. more. So Let her know. I just feel like men, they can give it, but they can't take it. They okay. just can't handle it. So what's Simple. wrong? So I, need to I don't know, know what's why, wrong it's just what that. it is. So what's wrong with that? This, this is... What's wrong with it? Lie. Listen, that's her fault. Lie. Lie. Lie till you die. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> lie. Lie till you die. Yeah. I you don't know, think I, girls I'm lie enough. Good, I'm not a good liar. Yes, you I, are. I just prefer maybe you just don't yes, tell the truth. Yes, you are. Yes, you just are. Just don't tell the truth. If I have to be a good liar, I you will. Admit, of I just don't like to lie. I don't like to. Girls are the best liars. Yeah, we are. Um, we okay, are. so... I, but we, I, we don't like... Well, I don't like There's to. like... I can give you like a whole freaking biblical answer for this question. I don't want to get too deep, but... No, get I deep. mean, generally speaking, you know, it's not as attractive for a woman to have a bunch of multiple partners. And that's just human nature. Like, even among women, women don't want a man that's only been with one girl. Like, or we don't want a virgin. You know what I mean? Is that why I got dumped so many times? <laughs> no. George went through a period where he decided to be celibate, and the girls, like, he dated these two girls and uh -huh. broke up with him. Uh-huh. Because no, you tell the whole story. No, not only did they break up with me, they got married like the day after they broke up with me. That's true. I yeah, was like, honestly, good luck, Chuck. Women, Yo, they, they ghosted them up. though. They ghosted them like right. It's human no, nature. No, they didn't even ghost you. They like hit you up after they got married, which was weird. Oh, Yo, one of them sent me an, invita an invitation to what? a wedding. I said, <laughs> what? Wow, you got friend zoned. Yeah, big time. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, so you know, generally speaking. Women, we want the guy that every woman wants. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or that we want the guy want that's the been around. Guy, the one that has yeah, that's a million been around. followers. We don't want that well, dude that nobody we wants. Want, yeah, we, we, well, want the, we want what everybody else wants. But well, it's not the same for go. women. That's why when you're like, oh, there are no men. No, there are good men. <laughs> They're out there. But all of y'all are just so busy fucking Trevor. <laughs> well, Trevor's a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Trevor has a man bun. Trevor... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, what? Trevor has his initials cut into his head. <laughs> so Trevor's a piece of shit. Like, you don't need to be dating Trevor. All these girls are dating that one guy. Right. There's so many guys. There's so many good guys in the world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you also got to look at it like this. Oh, I, hold your hand. Add on Facebook in a relationship. There might be a lot everything. of good men out there that may have bad hygiene. Or a lot of good men out there that just... I don't know. There's something that may turn off that woman specifically that they just can't swallow. So it's just you got you to gotta pick your poison. Got to pick your poison. So, according to you, I kind of agree that if this girl has been with a lot of partners, she might want to. We don't lie. know how many. She didn't tell us, but well, I will tell you this. But like, anything let's more say, than yeah, what's a number? What's a, what's number? a Give safe me a number for a man? For a man. So, if a man comes and what tells they're you, they're safe with. What are you safe with? If a man tells you, I've been with X amount of partners. What's the number that's like? This is the cutoff. I, honestly, I don't really have a cutoff. Like, as long as you're not out there making babies 50, with a hundred. 200. <laughs> as long as you don't have STDs and HIV, you know. Like I honestly, My I like I have a I have a male cousin and I tell him all the time. I'm like <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. Let them know. Be safe and keep yeah, it real. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's how I feel. I feel like a man should kind of they I feel like men need to go out and Oh, girls, to be very honest, yeah. can I give it's my? Human nature. my they gotta nature. get it out their system. Yeah. No, no. Can we hear hers? Right oh yeah, now? we maybe need to hear that. <laughs> can yeah, we hear hers? Yeah, yeah, can we right. hear hear the 
men need to go out and I wholeheartedly agree that men need to go out and fuck a lot of women and like live that life for a while they need to be playboys for a minute before they can really settle down and that's funny and if they're new money I, sorry just, to cut you off but if they're like new money and they don't experience that they don't experience bitches and hoes and fucking and, and all that stuff they, they can't they, they, they need to get that out their system before they could actually settle down with one woman just I feel like it's that's the nature what I of a man. think personally, and it's funny because I had this th- discussion with her husband, and he he wholeheartedly agreed with me. He's like, "Find you a man that's been there, done that." That's a hundred percent true. Yeah, hundred percent true. Like I'm a very particular person in mm-hmm. general. Just I'm always a particular person. So I haven't, while I haven't been out there and just slept with a whole bunch of women at all. Yeah, I've experienced a lot of life. Like, right, I've done it. Mm-hmm. Like I've lived. A What's lot your of life. number? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> four, four. But it sounds like yeah. he's had a lot of sex four? with those four. Yeah. <laughs> but we had, we've had like. Wait, like, it used to be three. Is there someone you haven't told yeah, me about? Don't even worry. You about tell me I'm everything. Doing. Don't even worry about what I'm doing in this world right yeah. now. Yeah. But the the concept is the concept is I, I'm just a very particular person, and it's because of my. Okay, so I won't ever sleep with a girl that if she got pregnant, just if she got pregnant, I wouldn't trust to be the mother of my child. Mm-hmm. So that eliminates a lot of women. Yeah. Oh, talk about the phone case That's thing, a really too. Good thing. Oh, what? What phone case? Women who don't have phone cases. Oh, yeah, if you don't have a phone case on your phone. <laughs> if you don't protect your phone, I think that's weird too. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, like, you're not protecting your vagina. Like, oh, let's really? Say, yo, is phone that case. What it is? Yo, I'm gonna tell you the real. But she well, married. Like, she I don't married. need to protect my vagina because I'm married. She's exactly. married. So you're okay. She you good. Go. You, can, you she don't good. Need, like, you're married, so you're exempt from the phone case law. Uh. But like, if you put the phone case in your back pocket, anal. Like, that's what. It's so like these are little things, like little symptoms. Okay, let me give some. So this guy. is a reflection of a woman's vagina, whether they have a phone case. It's or not, it's don't an listen item. to that. Listen, that's no. a thousand dollars. Cell phone. I no. get what you're saying. That's a thousand dollars. If you're not protecting your thousand dollar investment, right? How am I? Like, I just don't have a lot of faith. Like, and, and women should look at guys the exact same way. <laughs> Boom. Boom, that's super and, protection. And it's got a charger on it. That's back. what I'm talking about. I can't like, believe people are agreeing. I prepared. can't believe people are agreeing with what he's saying. People in chat are agreeing. People in life are agreeing. But I want to give some feedback as a man <laughs> yes. to uh, non- Anonymous 14. And here's what would happen in my scenario. Now, I don't necessarily judge someone who's had a lot of partners. If they're, I like to be present, live in the moment. The past is the past. So if I was dating a woman and she told me I had a lot of partners, I wouldn't be mad at the fact that she had a lot of partners. Here's the part that would bother me more. And I believe that men are the more insecure between the 100%, two sexes. 100%. We're so way more as fragile. a man, I would feel like I have a lot of competition to meet standards too. Mm-hmm. So it's more so like, oh, if you're experienced... yeah. That just gives me anxiety that I got to do a good job. <laughs> and that, that kind of triggers an insecurity. And what I think is happening, Anonymous 14, your man may not be as secure as you thought he was. No, here's the thing. We don't know what she said as her number. So when you say that, yo, she bust out 42, <laughs> bro, we might have a conversation. I dated someone who had 50, didn't Oh my goodness. Yeah, wow. and he was a nice guy. No, it wasn't a guy. I'm no, not fluid nice and I don't guy. smell. I'm, you, I'm a no straight, good smelling man. Yo, I had no problem with him. He had a problem with me. How, how were the walls of that man or, or woman? The, the, the girl's vagina? There, like after 50. There was men. no oh. man. Okay, no, no, there, there was I'm no only walls. with women. No, but she's asking walls. a good question. Like after 50. And that's, oh, that's the, walls. The, the myth. The walls of the oh, inside oh. of the vagina. Yo, the vagina snaps right back. Like honestly, like. It takes a lot so for it. That. And, and you can do it. It's, it's the concept of this. It's like, A, I no longer... Here's the thing with sex. At some point, whether it's physical or mental or spiritual, because if you believe that sex begins below the neck, you're starting in the wrong place, right? So the concept is that every time you have a sexual partner, you want to feel special, right? So it's not like I want a girl that likes to suck dick. I want a girl that likes to suck my dick. Like, there's a huge difference in that. And the concept of it is, if she went out and told him a number that was much higher than he anticipated, he might feel some type of way because now he no longer feels special. And men, especially powerful men or men who are 
ambitious. They need to feel special because that's all the confidence we get. They want to feel we need exclusive. to feel adored. Exclusive. Exactly. That's a good word. I want to feel we, like it's They want to feel exclusive. Yeah. Right? I think that's true, especially yeah. with powerful men. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so I want to feel adored. I want to feel like I'm the one who brought this out of you. I did this. And so if you're telling me a high number, and it's also the fact well, that you were in a bunch of relationships. I would rather you have been in five relationships than just have five one night stands. Right. But I feel like with with women, it's the other way around. They'd rather have me have had five one night stands because they can justify that mm-hmm. as just physical than five yeah relationships. I, I agree with that. Can yeah, I do an artistic sense. interpretation of what Tehran just said? Make me feel like I'm the only guy in the world. Like I'm the only guy in the world. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. That was amazing. That was, love it. That was wonderful. We need bars. more of those, okay? Yeah, bars. Like, hey, next Anywhere. time you have a track, you need to throw them on there. Yeah, get me yeah, on the track. Put yeah, on the yeah. auto tune. But I'm George good. actually makes uh, good music. He makes good beats and stuff. Oh, so. that's awesome. Um, okay. So, do you, did you have a number that you thought was unacceptable for men to have no, as partners? No, I never even thought about that. I just feel like. What about for I, women? I just want to honest. Ooh. For women, is there a number? Man. Is there a number, George? I think there's a number. What's I think the number? there's a number. The I don't number, really know what that number is. The number that I get a lot when I ask, when I share with women, I share my number. I think we all downplay the number, like we scratch one or two off the list. A number I've heard a lot from women is five. I was, I was thinking that number in my head. Five. Five yeah. is like there's a magic to that number. They're lying. It's nice. Nice to know we're They're all lying. lying. We're all lying. <laughs> yeah. They are totally lying. And no. what's what's a good number for a guy? What do y'all but that's think? That's the thing. They don't. They they're like. Oh, just, don't, be, oh, just keep it just real. Be yeah. No, because because yeah. when you say a lot, I expect men to. But, but when you say it should be a lot, girls. what is a lot? What is enough? You think when you're instructing the men? I'm not saying man. it should be enough. A lot. I'm just saying that's generally how it works. So what's a what's a lot? What's that meter where we're getting into the? Okay, you're cool. You could get married now. I mean, 30, 40, I guess. So my thing is, A, I feel, like, I, feel, I feel like age has nothing to do with it. It's about experience. Experience. Yeah. Like, first, first rule, don't. none of them need to be my friends. That's the first rule. So when you tell me it could be three and two of them were, were niggas I know, we're having a conversation. <laughs> oh, you, tell you me know what? 30, but they were all like, you studied abroad and I'll never see, I'll never run into yeah. Julio. You know? The I'll number. Never run into I feel like that's a black man's mentality versus a white man's mentality. I think that. No, because this Arab feels the same way. Yeah, I but feel the I'm same. Half way. Middle Eastern, so I think that's my cultural universal. perspective is very different as well. Right. No, I I do feel like it's always more difficult if it ends up being someone that you knew oh, yeah. or someone in the community that you have to face. That you have because we have yeah. a lot of frenemies. It's people that we're cool with. Yeah. But I don't want you. Like, if I'm a promoter, I don't want you to have slept with another promoter. Like, I don't want to... Every I can't time take I, you serious. Yeah. Right. Every time I talk to Norman, I don't want him to be like, oh, yeah, I, I slept with her. Oh, I dated her. You know, it just gets annoying. So because the concept is, right. the concept is especially, um, what's the worst thing a rapper can ever do? Not kill you, Rap shoot terrible. you. No. Mm-hmm. Worst thing a rapper do is, that's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. Like, that's... Oh, that was the best diss of all time. That was the best because like, all he said best was I, that then, best song ever. Exactly, <laughs> like hit him up. I don't, like I was on. Bi- I'm Biggie was my dude. I know. And then that one song or Tupac was my guilty pleasure. Like oh, yo, they man, said all of so, Brooklyn was playing that song yeah, the day it came out because it was crazy. And Biggie was like, what the fuck? Yeah, because it, it went so, so hard. hard. And when you hear that, like Trey Song said, "Mr. Steal Your Girl" to George twice, and he didn't. <laughs> And he failed. Yo, he did try to steal George's and girl. And he failed. But he said, Just Mr. Steal Your Girl twice. And, and, and yeah, it was remind, a girl. It by. wasn't a guy. It was yeah. a girl. Okay, okay George. Yeah. Okay. Yo. Um, this week's topic is actually one that a lot of us have thought about, put into perspective, have ideas about. It's, it's something that's actually near and dear to everyone who's ever been in a situation where they're in a relationship mm-hmm. and you don't know if it's jumped the shark, if it's going too far or... Or you should keep up with it. And it's, is love enough? Is love enough to keep a relationship working? You know, today we have... Should that be the foundation? Yeah, there Mm. are so many new challenges, especially today. So many requirements, so many things we need, so many things we're doing. Is love enough in a bond, in a marriage, or a relationship to keep two people together? Or do we need to factor other things? Finances. Do we need to factor other things? Social events. Do we need yeah, to factor like, do we look things? good together? Do we <laughs> fit well? Perspective, family, 
family, many cases, you have two people get together. How important the families is love? don't. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't along. think about this when they first get together. Mm-hmm. A lot of women, they just want to be married. They want to settle down. They see family. They see the bigger picture. Religion. And they think when you work. get married, that's the end of it. Like nothing else after this. Mm-hmm. And my life is perfect. But that's when it actually really gets hard. So, Marriage is fucking so hard. So when you went into the holy matronomy, did you <laughs> factor things it's other matrimony? Matrimony. <laughs> blah, blah, matrimony. I it's that. okay. It's I okay. caught that too. He, he matrimony. <laughs> yeah. And it's straight, not fluid. So did you factor other things or, or were you just like, yo, I'm so in love and I'm going to run into this I'm thing? I'm so blindly. in love. He makes me feel amazing. We're going to have beautiful children together and we're having so much fun. And, you know, I, I didn't really think about everything that came along with it. Like we got two kids now. Things change. Right. Um, I love him to death. You know, he's he's my best friend, but it's really fucking hard. Marriage What's is hard, really hard. Though? We've been What's... together for 11 years. Wow. You know, you got to keep it. You got to keep it spicy. You Everyone know, says marriage is hard, but what's hard? Like, what is so hard? There's two different people with two different perspectives. And sometimes when you get together, that those perspectives don't always match up. You realize that later on down the road. So, like, sometimes culture plays a major part in it. Like, I'm, I'm Caribbean culture. He's African-American, black, southern culture. Um, the way, the way that I was raised, both his parents were together. My parents were, um, were not together. So my mother was like... The breadwinner. She was the mother and the father. So Trinidad for me to be sub- are super strong. We are. And and for, for me to be submissive was very hard. I had to learn oh, wow. to be submissive. Wow. So we do this a lot. I'm an alpha female, he's an alpha male. And I so we butt heads a lot. all the time. All it's the crazy. Time. Do you ever wrestle? <laughs> uh, I tried to beat him up. Before. She's tried. Yo, he laughed. Wrestling he literally helps. laughed. He was like, What are you doing? Because like, he's, he's a big guy. Yeah. I try to charge him and slam him down because in my mind, I feel like I can That's a good way to let out somebody. tension. I'm mad. Yeah. But that's the thing is like how, how much, how important is love in that? So you mentioned is love the foundation? I think the answer to that is yes. Love is the foundation. See, we. Is it the only thing? No. And can love sustain a relationship? Just love? I would say what absolutely love not. Got to do. No, got, got to, to do. do. With it. Come on, everybody, put your hands in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think some of the most successful <laughs> marriages or relationships are from people that just have arrangements, and not that I'm promoting that. Wow, I'm not a promoting that so at all. Like, I want love personally, but I can still respect people that have certain arrangements. I talked to. Look, this is a conversation George and I got into with a group of girls. Mm-hmm. George is in in the basis and of love being the founding principle and mm-hmm. I was like explaining where do people get married where like where did you get married church I got married uh it was like uh, the Grand Del Mar outside beautiful scenery that's what's up not in a church no, no you don't <laughs> you got married at a courthouse you went to a court and you had a signed oh, right. piece of paper because is it it is an agreement. It is a business arrangement which is right. why you and your husband have a corporation that now gets tax breaks and benefits right. and it's the concept is this is a partnership mm-hmm. right and what else do you use partnerships with llc's and corporations the exact same terminology true partnership well tron when you're in the afterlife what good is your stupid little contract you get in court well you know what <laughs> until you get there there's about 50 60 years people are living long of hell <laughs> you have to go through to get there right so the concept <laughs> is you, there has to be an understanding and a, a, a mutual basis of this is what i provide this is what you provide mm-hmm. can we make this happen yep. this is who i am as a person yeah are you okay with that yeah and then guess and then, what people change as you get as the longer you're in a relationship people are human you're not going to stay the same way for the rest of your life the core of who you are might be the core of who you are but as you grow you learn different things you have different perspective you start to change and guess what if you guys are not growing together and understanding each other i think the root of it is understanding you begin to separate and only the strong survive Tosh, you were about to say something? Oh, I was about to say, like, I agree with Tehran about the, you know, having a partnership and all that. But even in your case, where, you know, we, you think love is the Why do you say end it like all that? and be I all. I feel patronized. No, <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of with you on that. Okay, I'm kind she's of, with I'm me. a bit of an idealist, too, and I uh-huh. like the whole idea of love. But there is, there can be, like, for me, I've been madly in love with someone, and they've loved me, too. But we're both not ready Oh. To be together, he's not ready, or I may not be ready. So sometimes the whole timing is off. Or I've even read like books about soulmates where they say like certain times in this lifetime, 
you're just not ready or you're not prepared to meet that soulmate. So maybe you have to, it it, it takes another lifetime for you guys to come together. And according to this book, it's all theoretical. No, no, I love these books. Keep preaching. They say that soulmates always will will be attracted to each other. So even if in another life, at some point you guys will get together. You will eventually. Sometimes, and they say it's one of the most painful things when in one lifetime, one partner is not ready for the other wow see what i just want to sorry go ahead oh i have a question Mm -hmm. i was just curious because it made me think like Mm -hmm. do you think that the person needs to be fully ready and know exactly who they are before they can settle down with somebody because people don't do it all the time or can you figure that out when you're in the relationship that's exactly why i'm not married yet i feel like i'm still on this journey to find the ultimate george i haven't gotten there yet i mean the gk swag kicks in a little (laughs) now and then but i feel like i'm still on this journey And until I feel complete within myself, then I will be able to go and have a partnership. That could be an ongoing thing because people people are striving for that, to feel complete. And sometimes it never happens. It might never happen. And that's the thing where I I do believe there is um, something to be said about, and we hate the word settle and not settle for something less, but settle in terms of your search to say, you know what? I've gone far in my search. I feel that I've gotten to a solid point. And now, although I don't feel I'm 100% there, maybe there is a companion out there who could be strategic or who could be a good fit for me to take my life to a different level, maybe not in the exact way I imagined, but maybe I need to open up to that. And I'm slowly getting there. And my thing is this, is this twofold to that, right? So I feel like people who get married young last, right? The same way like you find a larger percentage of arranged marriages Mm -hmm. last. Yeah, people who actually get married younger together when they're both in the same because you you are finding out who each other are within Uh, each other. uh, Ah, you mold each other. And then you also see arranged marriages because you're going in without expectations. You're it's it's arranged, and you know, hey, this is the end all be all, and you'll figure it out. And no one likes to talk about that kind of stuff because it's also generational. Where and I and I say this often is if my dad, for example, drops his phone and breaks it. And I drop my phone and break it. We have two different ideas of what we're going to do. I'm going to go out and buy a brand new phone. I no longer like this phone. My dad will just try to figure out how to fix that phone. Mm -hmm. He won't even try to even think about getting a new phone. To him, that's a waste. And something that one of George's uncles said to us one time was when he was like, when you're young, it's the best time to get married. Mm -hmm. So that you get it out the way and you figure it out, figure out life together. And and what he told me, he said, the older you get, the more difficult it is to conform mm-hmm. to somebody else. You're stuck yeah. in your ways. I totally agree with that. You get stuck in your ways. You get stuck in your I, ways. Yeah. And now, unfortunately, when I date, I have to tell the woman that, <laughs> un, uh, you know, that I will work with you. But in terms of my character traits, what's done is kind of done. And I've discovered this about myself. <laughs> right. I am who I am. I've tried to change and adapt. And I was... And able to, whereas I feel like when I was younger, I was able to do that. So what's the conclusion? Is love enough? No. It's it's extremely important, no. but it's not enough. It's not and enough. and it's I not think enough. that's true of any relationship, not just romantic relationships. You can have a child if you're 16 and you're not, you can love that child. But if you're not prepared to take care of that child, then... Sometimes it's best that you give the child up for adoption or your mother takes care yeah. of it. You know what I'm saying? Do I have to get so, rid of my dog that I just adopted? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's even a good example. Like, you can love your, your dog, dog, but if you're traveling like I, I all the time. Did you know I gave my dog like, to Connie? No. Yeah, I gave yeah. her. Hilarious. Last night. Weekend? Oh, wow. She oh, wow. took her home. But, took home. like I said, I think that's true of any relationship, not just romantic relationships. That's so, real, though. Where, where, do you, where can people find you if you want to be found? Uh, I'm the real Noriega. My uh, last name is spelled N O R. E-I-G-A. Yeah, it's like Nori, the rapper, right. who you dated, and I-G-A. <laughs> the real. And then... Um, you can usually find me in outer space. Usually I'm not here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, at the Sasha Way. And your single that you dropped? It's called Sweet Gyal, and you can find it on all uh, platforms. Um, the cool. video's on YouTube, and it's Sasha Gates. That's what's up. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yes. We really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to check Thank them out. Find us. them. And, of course, find us at on Twitter at... Um, Imperfect G Show. Instagram at... Imperfect G Show. And email us at... Imperfect G Show at gmail.com.